All right, welcome back to the show. Today we are talking about the NBA draft, the NBA draft lottery, and rookie scale contracts, and how they all work. The first thing we should talk about are the draft lottery odds. We all know that the worst teams in the league have the highest likelihood of getting the best picks. But how do these odds actually break down? Well, the lottery picks for the draft are the first 14 picks in the draft. So if you're one of the top 16 teams, you do not participate in the lottery. If you were the best team in the league, you get the 30th pick. If you were the 16th best team in the league, you get the 15th pick. And the second round of the draft is entirely in order. The best team gets the 60th pick and the worst team gets the 31st pick. So in theory, a team could get into the play-in tournament, win the championship, and still get the first round pick. Although this is highly unlikely because your odds of getting that first pick are 2%. The team that would have had those odds this year were the Chicago Bulls, but that didn't happen. So let's start with the odds of the worst teams in the league. The three worst teams in the league all have the same odds of getting the number one through four pick. They did this because teams were aggressively trying to lose at the end of the year to ensure that they had the worst record and would get the best odds for their first round pick. Watching teams put as much effort into losing as most teams put into winning was not fun for the fans of those teams. So if you're one of the three worst teams in the league, your odds for the first pick are 14%. The second pick, 13.42%. The third pick, 12.75%. And the fourth pick, 11.97%. And if you were the worst team in the league, the worst pick you could possibly have is five, which is what the Detroit Pistons were, and that was the pick they got. Personally, I think they deserved it, because God curses those who tank. Houston was the second worst team, and the worst pick they could get was the sixth pick. They got the fourth pick, God had mercy. As we all know, the Spurs got the first pick overall, and they were the third worst team, and they are undoubtedly going to use it on Victor Wembanyama. A lot of people think the draft is rigged, now that the potentially most coveted NBA draft prospect in league history is going to a team with a proven track record with a lot of success. Honestly, if it was rigged, I wouldn't care. A player with that much potential should go to a team that's going to maximize his talents. But it's not rigged because they have a big lottery ball machine. Four balls come out and that is a sequence of numbers that coordinates with a specific team. There is a representative watching this lottery ball machine to make sure no funny business happens. They used to do it in a significantly less sophisticated way. David Stern would just reach into a glass case and pull out an envelope with a team's name on it. This led to the conspiracy theory that 1985, David Stern reached into the glass case and pulled out a frozen envelope that correlated with the Knicks. So allegedly, David Stern intentionally gave that first pick to the New York Knickerbockers. The idea was that if the Knicks were good, then the league was doing well. At this point, it would be way too hard to say that the NBA draft is rigged and there are any holes in that system. So that's how the lottery works. Let's get into traded picks. If you want more detail, I actually have a video on this subject. So teams are allowed to trade their future picks, obviously. For instance, that Chicago Bulls pick that I mentioned before actually belongs to the Orlando Magic. They received that pick from the Vucevic trade in 2021. So now the Magic have the 6th pick and the Bulls 11th pick. Obviously the Magic wanted the Bulls to be bad so that they could get a higher pick from them. But they didn't want the Bulls to be too bad because that pick was protected. Meaning that if the Bulls had gotten the 1st through 4th pick, they would have got to keep that pick. This is a way teams can avoid feeling like complete fools if they trade away a player that might have been Scoot Henderson or Victor Wembanyama for Nikola Vucevic. Sometimes on draft night, a team will trade up for a player that they really want. Let's take the classic example of Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Doncic fell to the third pick and the Mavs had the fifth pick overall. They knew Luka wouldn't make it to the fifth pick, so they called up Atlanta who had that third pick. The Mavs swapped their picks with the Hawks. Luka went third and Trey was selected by the Atlanta Hawks fifth. But what did the Mavs have to give up to get that higher pick from Atlanta? They had to give up their first round pick the following year in 2019, which ended up being Cam Reddish. Good move, Dallas. Now let's get into what rookie scale contracts look like. Generally, these are cheap, long deals that go up with the salary cap. And your draft position correlates with how much money you'll be paid. Next year, Victor Wembanyama will be making $9 million a year. For reference, Bradley Beal makes $47 million next year. Like I said, these are cheap deals. Your salary goes down the lower you're picked in the first round. The last pick in the first round next year will be making $1.8 million. About a sixth 
what Victor Wembanyama is going to make. That's why you see guys get all in their feelings when they fall in the draft lower than they expected. The rookie scale contracts are four years, but can be longer or shorter depending on a few factors. The first two years on that contract are fully guaranteed. For instance, Victor Wembanyama is going to make $9 million next year. His sophomore year, he's going to make $9.6 million. Even if he loses an arm, he's getting that money. That money is guaranteed to him. The last two years are team options, meaning the team gets to decide if they want to keep the contract. So those last two non-guaranteed years for Victor Wembanyama are going to be $10 million and probably about $15 million. A team doesn't necessarily have to pick those up though. It's possible that the team that drafted you kicks you to the curb and leaves you as a free agent in your second year. But this doesn't really happen a lot. They're cheap deals. Usually teams just either take you or trade you. In fact, if you're a star player, your team is actually going to extend you before your rookie contract runs out. They're going to do this the year before your last year of your rookie contract. And it guarantees these star players Bradley Beal type money when their rookie contract ends. So Luca, Trey, Triple J all got this extension, but DeAndre Ayton was not so lucky. So DeAndre was not extended by the Sun, so at the end of his rookie contract, he became a restricted free agent. Meaning that another team could make him an offer, but the Suns got first refusal rights. So DeAndre last summer got an offer from the Pacers for years, $133 million. But the Suns had the ability to look at that offer and say, hey, we want to make this. We want to match it. That's good enough, we'll sign him for the $133 million. Sorry, Pacers. As a business move, this is what a team should do. Let the market decide what your player is worth and then not pay a penny more. Obviously, Aiton was not happy about this. He's watching Luca, Trey, Triple J get all their extensions and guarantee their money for the next five years, but he has to wait a year until his contract ends. He probably saw this as a lack of faith in his abilities with the Phoenix Suns, and let's be honest, that's exactly what it was. Now, as for the second round picks, the rookie scale contract does not apply. Typically, these guys are left signing 10-day contracts, two-way contracts, so they're playing in the G League as well. And if they're lucky, they get the league minimum, which is about a million dollars now a year. So that's a very high level look at the NBA draft. I have a few videos that go into a little more detail, but now you kind of know what's going on for the draft that's about to happen. So thank you for being here. Much love. Like the video, subscribe, do all that, and be good to your mother's corn dog.